Today, I am gonna be taking my new shoes out for a spin. So this is a first impressions review of sorts, I guess, of the Reebok Energy Float Ride, no, Reebok Float Ride Energy 4. This is not a scientific review. If you're looking at specs and scientific facts about the shoe, go watch 4D, go watch Kofuzi, Run for Adventure. All those guys have done detailed reviews on this shoe. What I'm doing is taking my new shoes out for a spin and I'm gonna be telling you how they feel. I haven't taken them out yet. This will be my first run, so it's gonna be a good, honest, first impressions review of how they feel. I'm gonna try and go for an 8K run. I'm gonna get a few tempo, or no, sorry, no, I shouldn't overpromise things. I'm gonna get a couple of easy kilometers in there, followed by maybe a marathon paced kilometer or two, a tempo kilometer, and hopefully some stride. So I'm gonna try and take you across the board of my various paces and see how this shoe feels. So, let's hit the streets. Weather looks good. It's Friday night. It's a wild Friday night in the Maguire household. We're doing shoe reviews. So, let's hit the streets and let's see what this shoe is made of. today we're gonna do 8k first two are gonna be nice and easy and followed by a marathon pace kilometer which will be somewhere around 5.45 to 5.30 minute pace then we're gonna go easy for one kilometer no no then we're gonna go tempo then the next four are gonna be nice and easy and then we're gonna finish with some strides so far, so good. Nearly 2K in. Nice and bouncy, nice and responsive. Nice and comfy. No problems here. So, why this shoe? Well, a few reasons really. First and foremost, I need a good daily trainer. I've got a pair of racing shoes that are my endorphin speeds, twos that I leave for race day. But what I want is a good, reliable daily trainer. I might look to increase my shoe rotation in a few weeks time to something that will suit a longer run better. But what I wanted was something that would just get me through 75 to 80% of my runs. I looked at the Puma Velocity Nitro, I can't remember what model it is, what iteration. And then I saw the Reebok Float Ride 4, Energy 4. So many people I've chatted to online have recommended it. The threes. So then I noticed they're only 75 quid. And then I got a discount code, getting me a further 25% off, which means these shoes just over 50 quid at just over 56 quid sorry at 56 quid with free postage and packaging i've got a pair of some really well respected shoes so that's the motivation for having these shoes i'm feeling the, the foam and underneath the midfoot and i'm finding that quite I don't know, it feels quite different, especially when I compare them to my Sorkin Endorphin Speed 2s, which are like wearing pogo sticks. This feels like it's really absorbing the tarmac under my feet. And uh, yeah, it feels good, it feels nice. Just as the sun's about to come out, it's time to do that tempo kilometre, let's wait for the beep. There it is, here we go. Man, 
done, these things are quiet. They're like the polar opposite to an alpha fly. During a race and someone's coming up behind you and they sound like they're slapping someone repeatedly around the face with a wet fish. That's probably somebody wearing a pair of alpha flies. These things are, are stealthy. Okay, let's bring it back down to easy again. Tempo kilometer felt good, felt nice, felt smooth. Still no rubbing. Oh, still looking absolutely gorgeous. But more importantly, how are the shoes? Well, 7K down, feeling good. Very, very impressed. No problems or issues at any of the paces I've done. So the only thing left to do now are some strides, which I'll do after the eight kilometer in about five minutes. Okay, so now that's the easy kilometers done. Just gonna set the camera up halfway in between this little stride track that I use. It's not a track. And I'm gonna do a, you know, two 30 second strides. And uh, it's got a nice little horseshoe shape. So it will give me an idea about how the shoes do on cornering and things. Hopefully I won't go flying into the basin. Let's see. Right then, let's see if they're any good. You know what? I think one 30 second max effort in this heat is enough. <sighs> Job done. If you're anything like me, then this time of year, maybe more important than a good pair of running shoes is some sunnies. I have to wear sunglasses for like three, four months of, these, of, of this time of year because I've got a horrific hay fever and they just act as a barrier to stop myself rubbing my eyes out and also if you live in Worcester you'll know if you live anywhere near water I guess a lake or river wherever you train the flies around here are just like <sighs> horrific so you swallow about 400 flies on average and you get about 800 flies in your eye so that is why you'll see me very often wearing sunglasses over this May June July August period for my own sanity really. So just on the walk back now and just some thoughts and feelings on these Reebok Float Ride Energy 4s. I can't remember the name. <laughs> Float Ride Energy 4, I think that was what they're called. They're good. I think they're really nice. They performed, I think, best at that. Well, I guess tempo was pretty good. I was gonna say they performed best at the at the easy pace, but obviously I've only I've only done a grand total of 8 or 9k in them, so 50k, come back to me and see what I think. But they felt really good at that tempo kilometre that I did. The easy kilometres felt really, really comfortable on my calves. No problems on my Achilles, balls on my feet felt alright. Uh, so yeah, that foam that's, that's, in, that, that's, that, that's in the shoe feels really really nice and comfortable and i i can i'll be up before i finish those strides i did at the end this shoe is not a speed shoe obviously you probably already know that but i can definitely tell you that for sure now i feel like i've run quicker in my saucony endorphin speed twos with less effort there's more of a there's more of a roll through the foot on those shoes than there is on this one uh, so yeah, didn't really feel the energy return as I was striding. That's probably just me making excuses because I'm slow. But yes, will I be sending these back? Well, no, because I've just used them. Apologies for the eyes, you know why. 
let's have a debrief about these shoes. So let's get them off my feet first. So there we have it. It's a really good looking shoe, if I'm honest. When I bought this, I thought I was getting like a off-white sort of magnolia sort of colour. But it, when you get it out of the box, it's not. You realise very quickly that it's not. It's, it's actually like a, a turquoisey mint green, this colourway. And it's got this obviously like, like this neon sort of yellow trim uh, and blue. And I think it looks really smart. The, I think these are the best looking pair of trainers that I now own. So really pleased with the way they look and the stitching. When, when I think about it, when I think that this trainer is essentially a cheap trainer, I'm scratching my head as to why, because the way it's made is it's really well made. Like the Reebok there is really nicely embroidered in. The, the stitching across the upper is really nice. The upper itself is made of uh, all recycled materials. Oh, hang on, it says, oh, hang on, 30% of the upper is recycled material. So, sorry, that's not true. Um, but apart from that, I mean, it's light. It's the same sort of weight as my Endorphin Speed 2s. It's really quite a light shoe. And there's not really a lot else to say about it. It's just a good old... A good old shoe and I was I was gonna let me put this back on so I don't walk around with one shoe on so the reason I bought these is because I was I was really wanting a daily train I've got Nike Pegasus 36 which are a little bit outdated now I've done a, quite a lot of, of miles and K's in them the Rincon 2s have just completely lost their balance so they just don't feel comfortable anymore uh, my Brooks Adrenalines again they've just I've sort of retired them and they've become my sort of casual shoes now. Um, and yeah, I was just, I had a real space in my, uh, on the shoe rack for a daily trainer. And it was between the Nike Invincible, which I've heard really good things about, it's super cushioned. Uh, and these Reebok came into my thoughts via a couple of videos I'd seen. And one thing I didn't want to do is have this sort of blind loyalty to a brand like Nike, just because they're Nike. I haven't worn Reebok on my feet since I was about 11, when I had some Reebok classics, when I was a little delinquent. So it's, it's actually really, it's really strange really that I've gone for a Reebok shoe, but they feel really good. And also fun fact, they're owned by Adidas. I did not know that because I got a tracking email that said, your Adidas order is on the way. So I was like, huh? Anyway, as I said at the start of this video, this isn't an in-depth review on this shoe. It's just purely my experience using it on its maiden voyage. So I do apologize if you've got this far and you were hoping for specs and scientific experiments. I, no, that's not me. That's not my bag. I used it for the first time today. There were no catastrophic failures or any malfunctions with the shoe. So in my book, I feel like that's 56 quid well spent. And that's got to be the main thing about the shoe, hasn't it? 56 quid. That's almost unheard of now for a, a really good daily trainer in the market today for 56 pounds. <sighs> Come on, that's a really good deal. So look for those look for those voucher codes because 25% off it's a good deal. Anyway, like I said, thank you so much if you've managed to get this far through the video. Hugely appreciated. I will see you on the next video whatever that may be about, but until then, I'll see you soon. Take it easy you guys. Ta da.